I'm here with uh, with Brett and Liz, our Overland Life on Instagram, and uh, we're going to talk about this beast we have behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we jump right in, why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey, what you're doing, and, and what made you decide to hit the road? Yeah, we uh, kind of were living the big life, we thought. We had the big house and yeah. the, the good job and a bunch of debt to go with it. Right. And um, started going out, kind of overlanding on weekends, did the rooftop tent thing, and, and started taking more longer trips, week-long trips, stuff like that. We realized this was better. We loved being outside, we loved being, being out in nature and traveling, and, and tried to put a plan in place on how to how to get to where we could travel pretty much full time. Started just getting rid of all the stuff and uh, setting the plan in, in place to get out of debt and figure out how to get on the road. Now, how long were you guys uh, planning, would you say? Like when you decided, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, um, how long before that moment and the time that you actually hit the road? We already had like a five year plan to get out of debt and uh -huh. during that time, we probably, I'd say around the two year mark, started kind of getting the niche to really put a plan together. Uh -huh. And full speed, those last three years was just focused, get out of debt, right? Just put some money in the bank, you know, get, get the rigs ready to go and uh, go on the road. So you you uh, you set your plan and you stuck to it? Stuck to it. Um, now, how long have you been on the road? Uh, we had renters move into our house February 2019. So okay. almost yeah. almost a year. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Right on. Well, congrats on that. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Well, while we talk about your rig, uh, you can tell us how it's gone over over the last year um, um, as well. And this is this is my third Tundra. Uh, it's been a great platform for traveling and being in. Um, uh, yeah. This is a 2011 Toyota Tundra. Uh, it's their Rock Warrior edition, which means it initially came with different colored bumpers, grill. Uh, it was geared with 430s instead of 410s, which I really liked about the Rock Warrior edition. Yep. Um, so that you know, I could probably use a little more gear, but it's suffice for what we're doing yeah um but it's a really reliable platform uh as most toyotas are i i think really all we've done maintenance wise other than changing out the suspension which was a, a different story altogether yeah um has changed the oil and air filter that's it right on so right. And, and we've probably done i'd say 35 40 thousand miles so far Wow. So up into Canada and all over the Western U.S. And how many miles total, total does it uh, have? About 118. Great entry angle. I've sat this truck on every piece it has, and mm -hmm. it's taken it. There's a little scratch down the middle of the front, which was uh, when we went down Black Bear Pass. There's that big boulder right in the middle. Yep. And uh, had to go right over that to get around that corner. So, uh -huh. I mean, it's... It's tough. It's heavy duty. It's a 12,000 pound winch, and I run it with double snatch blocks. Uh, it's all steel, and it's it's... Plus, I love the way it looks. I had right. never seen a bumper quite like that. You have a rigid light bar here. Got all rigid lights, front and rear. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's uh, they're like SR series, so it's uh, I think a 75 degree radius. Uh -huh. And this guy with their D series pods is everything I've ever needed on the trail. I haven't needed any more light out front. I mean, it's it's perfect. And then um, these are kind of new to our trip as well. These are their uh, DOT stamped uh, daytime ambers. So okay. you can actually run them on the highway. They're mm -hmm. legal to have on on the highway, which for us on like really long stretches of, of highway, it's nice to have the ambers up here. But instead of running the HIDs and these getting hot during the day, you can just run the daytime amber and you can see it from miles away. Plus in dust if you're in a group. So um, you you look at the rig and immediately you see the, the flip pack. That thing is awesome. Yeah, I, we I love it. I glanced inside. We'll take a better look at it. Um, tell us about that. Um, we started with a regular rooftop tent. Um, we had just a regular camper shell on the back. And it was great. It was awesome. But we knew when we were going to do this trip, we wanted a lot more space. So we started looking at the stuff that was on the market. Um, you know, a lot of the, the shark fins that everybody's got nowadays, they've got a lot of room, but a lot of them it seems like you have to move the bed out of the way to go to bed or to stand in the back. The flip pack gives you a bed all the way in the front and gives us a full living space in the back. So it's the right. maximum use of space to have with the smallest footprint. So when it's closed, it just looks like any other camper shell out there. So right. it's uh, that was kind of the driving force. We love the, the way that it flips over the cab. So, you know, when we find camp and we park, all we have to do is put a footprint for the truck. There's nothing over the back. Right. There's nothing off the side. Literally, where if we can fit the truck there, we can stay there. Yeah. That's, so it, it's it's it, a very small footprint with the maximum amount of space. It, it's awesome. Just looking, you can see the amount of space on the inside. Yeah, that's it's cool. great. We love it. Right on. All right. Hey, let's uh, let's take a look around, and uh, I'll ask you about your suspension tires and stuff like that. Let's do that. All righty. Okay. 
Well, well, wheels. Uh, is there anything special? Any thinking behind the wheels that you uh, that you had, or not this, too much? Are these are these stock? I don't. Th recognize they're them. not stock. Yeah. Stock is a uh, one of the Rock Warrior things again. Is a yeah. is a seventeen, which is there's a, uh, only a few companies that a seventeen will fit around the caliper. Uh -huh. um, these are they're a discount tire wheel. They're a lightweight aluminum, which I knew would get scratched up and potentially damaged, but I wanted to save a little bit of weight yep. here and there as best I could. Yep. Um, so it's an eighteen inch wheel. Uh, I like the style. It looks like a bunch of the other brands that are out there. They're, they're pretty similar, but it's it's lightweight and they've been really durable. I mean, they, they take hits from rocks and they've been holding up great. Right on. And you, you're you running the BFG KO2s. There's nothing Love to say em. about that. Love them. Right? Yeah. I mean, they're just full of fruit. They just go and go. Great. Cool. Tell us about your suspension. You've got a lot of weight. I've got so, a lot of weight. So you must have gone through some kind of uh, evolution on suspension. Tell us about that. Did. Um, when I bought it, the previous owner had the Fox 2.5 set up on here. Um, uh -huh. So he had the uh, non-adjustable in the front with an external reservoir and adjustables in the rear. Yeah. Um, and they, they're great when they were great. Uh, uh -huh. But we had two major failures on the back end. Uh, mm -hmm. The top stud is steel. The top cap was aluminum. And it's set completely separated and hogged out twice on us on the trail. So we've been stranded, not stranded, we were able to get home, but we had yeah. to remove the rear shock at one point. We were carrying a spare just so we could get home. Got it. Um, and it happened pretty rapidly. So um, even after rebuilding them a couple times, which this kind of suspension does need to be rebuilt, um, we eventually got in touch with a, a, a newer company in the US, uh, Elka. We told them how much weight we had, mm -hmm. uh, what we were running, the geometry, the lift, how much weight, you know, the rear spring setup. We've got a Deaver setup in the back as well. And Elka uh, came on board with a 750 pound front spring rate. Uh, we've got the Camberg upper control arms and they're fully adjustable front and rears. Okay. So right now I've got them set to kind of a neutral setting, but you've got, I think, 18 settings of high speed and 16 settings of low speed. So it, I've got to kind of figure that out yeah. as we go. But yeah. um, it's so, it, it's a massive improvement on and off road so far. That's awesome. And they're great. You, you, you mentioned uh, that they worked with you on your on your loadout that's 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 they, really good to they did I, I got in touch with them talked to them about engineering they wanted to know the weight of the vehicle yeah. they they're, they're they're not just sending me a generic pack they wanted to know what, what i was running how i was going to be using it and this is what we kind of came up with as the right setup and and that's a big deal to be able to say hey here's my expedition weight this is what i'm going to be on the back this is what i'm going to be on the front this is how i want the ride to be Correct. where i'm going to be driving all those things are, absolutely are really important that's cool that's yeah cool. and it's been great right on and you have uh it looks like you have some pretty robust sliders i know they are because we put them to the test last we night we sat it on them a couple times <laughs> last night yep <laughs> that is the uh what well, uh another uh, part of your suspension is absolutely <laughs> absolutely i i have dragged them across a couple of rocks uh to get through a few things yeah. uh she, she's long she's, yeah it's, it's it's not a compact truck yeah your breakover angle is is you know that that's something to consider um and uh yeah you're gonna use those it's a good thing to mention for for everyone everyone watching that um sliders are one of the first things you need to put on your rig if you're going to be off-road because other the damage is expensive it, it is yeah. and, and the only complaint i would have on my style uh -huh. is because we have dogs yeah um I would have them filled on the top uh -huh. because we're constantly worried about our bigger dog jumping in and out of the truck and maybe her leg getting caught. Right. The last thing I want is a broken leg on a dog out yeah, in the woods. So, exactly. um, so that's, if I do anything to them, it'll be to, you know, get them covered. So okay. how do you set up the interior? There's a lot going on. Um, okay. I did a rear seat delete, built a, a deck in the back. Uh -huh. uh, we've got an 82 quart ARB fridge, which for this kind of life is a must. You don't want to be dealing with ice or any of that kind of stuff. It's probably right. one of the best ads we've done. Um, we have a 75 amp hour AGM secondary battery. We use a SeaTech battery to battery charging system because these trucks, newer trucks have a smart alternator. So you can't just put them on an isolator anymore. Yeah. So this system actually charges the battery down to bring this up to the right voltage to charge that. Mm -hmm. um, plus I had an input for solar. So we also have 120 watt solar for park somewhere for a couple days. We can lay it out, use our inverter. We've got a 2000 watt sine wave inverter as well uh, to charge camera batteries or laptops or whatever we need to do. Yep. Um, so that's just the whole back seat is basically all that. Um, underneath the deck, I built it for tool storage. So we've got tool rolls, tool bags. I've got some miscellaneous parts, bins, nuts and bolts, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, up in front, we've got a uh, couple of forms of comms. We've got a hardwired GMRS uh, Midland mm -hmm. in the front. And then we've got the little Baofeng for more actual ham frequencies and with people with that 
I have a CB, but nobody seems to run CB anymore. Yeah. And my antenna, as you can see, comes right out the top of the roof. Yep. Which means that <laughs> every time I go to bed, I got to take it off. So yeah. nobody really runs CB. It's still in there if we encounter somebody, but I can't remember the last time I ran anybody who's running CB. So uh, other than that, you know, we've got, we added a bunch of uh, USB chargers, you know, charging up battery packs and phones and all that kind of stuff while we're driving is important too. So we added uh, two high power, uh, I think they're eight volt double USB chargers, which are awesome. Over here, we'll we'll talk about the business end here. The business end. This is this is a lot of the, a lot of the fun stuff. Um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your philosophy? Whether you derived that philosophy after it was done, or you actually planned it this way? Like, <laughs> tell us about the build out itself. How'd you um, how'd you build this thing out? We we picked up the flip pack. We found it up in. Casa Robles? There? No. Where did we find it? I forgot. San Luis Obispo. San Luis. Yeah. So yeah okay. Sorry. We picked up the foot back in San Luis Obispo. Yeah. And drove it home empty, just with the de the deck drawers, and that was it. I already had those in there. Um, went back to San Diego, and we had basically that was on a Saturday. I drew it all up on a piece of paper. Uh, I ordered the connectors for the aluminum. Uh huh. Um, from two companies. One had an overnight online option, the other one did not. <laughs> and the one that did not called me Monday when these showed up and I was already starting to build. So, wow, wow that, that's fast. Yeah, so um, basically I drew it out on a Saturday, started building on a Monday uh, intermittently in a driveway while it was raining uh, down in San Diego. And um, we kind of had a pretty good idea of where we wanted things. Uh -huh. uh, traditionally, I would have rather had the kitchen on the other side, but because this has the 46 gallons of fuel on that side, yeah. I wanted to split the weight because we knew our water was going to be on this side, our 11 pound propane tanks on this side. So we had all of, we wanted to have our kitchen weight on this side of right, the setup. So we did lose a little bit of space because of the way the, the the piece up top tucks into that side. So uh -huh. um, tell me a little bit more about the aluminum, this aluminum structure that you use. What is it? So it's. I would have loved to have used the extruded aluminum because they've got all the channels. You can bolt stuff to it super easily. It's yep. incredibly expensive. Yes, it and is. we wanted to keep as much money for travel. Yeah. So this stuff is a box style standard. I don't know the mill. I don't remember the mill, but it's your lightweight mm -hmm. aluminum tubing at eleven dollars a piece, mm -hmm. a stick, and you just cut it with you know a handsaw or, or a grinder. Uh -huh. And then these Esto connectors, the the connectors, they are a hammer in connectors so you kind of lay everything out and you get your hammer out and start wailing on them right. and they they're a very tight fit if you look close it kind of spread the aluminum just a little bit oh god so they fit incredibly tight and then anywhere that like this is the solid panel yep so i have this screwed in all the way around but anywhere that was going to be an open joint on the back side i just drilled it out put a little rivet in there and it holds it everything's held together all year wonderfully they're super low tech the whole thing i just want as low tech as possible i want to stuff to not yeah. break or have to worry about. And you bring up a really good point about um, overland life, permanent full-time life on the road, which is the, the need for stealth camping. Yes. Um, if, if you're always going out on a trail or in environments like this, great. You can deploy, you can set up your stuff, but if you're in a more urban area and you need to sleep, you have a stealth camp set up so you don't have to open this all up and you guys can sleep back there. Yep, curtains on the side, very low light inside. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically the way we set it up is all of our couch cushioning that's in here yeah. is also our bed cushioning. So when we're set up like this and it's nice and it's comfortable, we've got a couch, we've got a place to lounge, hang out. If it's bad weather, we've got somewhere to hang out. Yep. Uh, but when we have some, need somewhere to sleep, they all just lay down perfectly. And it's, I mean, they're, they're actually a crib mattress. We got at Ikea. We cut the big one in half uh -huh. and then Liz wrapped it in Mexican blankets. So. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Very cool. Very cool. Um, in terms of storage and, and uh, layout, what do you what do you guys pack on this side here? So this is all our clothing underneath on this side. Uh -huh. um, that was probably the hardest thing to whittle down because we were going to be on the road all year. So winter clothing is big. It's bulky. It's puffy. Um, summer clothing, shorts, t-shirts, yeah. tank tops, don't need much. So initially we had designed it. We were going to do the front runner bins underneath there for our clothing. Uh -huh. But as three of those bins and the space that's there it wasn't really enough. The bin itself took up too much space. Um, so we met up with our buddy Adam uh, over at Step 22. Mm -hmm. He has these bags already. Um, and they were the perfect fit to go underneath there for our clothing. They're durable, they're rugged, but he went just for us, added a handle on the end. 
and a strip of Velcro so we can label them. Great. So under the floor here, just pointing this out, you have a, you have a, a, a drawer a drawer system. Yes. Um, what are we putting these drawers here? So these are the decked drawer systems. They just yep. come for trucks. Uh, this this side is kind of all of our stuff that we need. Like right when we get to camp, we've got lighting. Um, this is also my hose for my air compressor. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got um, ammo. We've yep. got uh, our jack, and then uh, some fire starters if we're dealing with wet wood and whatnot. And then also back here is all of our recovery. So this stuff comes out when it's time to do recovery. All of our strapping. You've got tree straps. Don't don't bury your recovery equipment. Do not bury your recovery <laughs> equipment. No, so the tree straps, and then we've got another bin in the back uh, with even more stuff too. We've got a long long strap. We've even got a quick strap in there as well. So cool. Yeah, we've got quite a few. It's amazing how much stuff actually fits into these. Obviously, it's weight, but you know, when you want it, when you need it, you've got it all. Great. So, so um, what what do we have on? other side a lot of utility on this side. yes yeah, so this side utility um, the other side is kitchen and mess um, so your kitchen's a mess the kitchen is always a mess <laughs> <laughs> dry goods all that kind of stuff um, we have a kitchen up top but yep. we also you don't have to pop the top for lunch right so from our initial setup before we always had a kitchen in this drawer uh -huh. and so we have a single burner with a green can and then we've got a, just a gas soft hose that goes back to that so that that's all kind of contained with one burner set of pots and pans all your oils kitchen utensils all that kind of good stuff yeah um and these are their little bins that they already have which they work perfect for that kind of stuff great and so then that, we just have food and extra food storage stuff back that way that looks like just an entire um uh slide out kitchen right there it, it is yeah. and it's it's great for cooking lunch it's yep. this morning making coffee whatever you need it, it's it's nice let me ask you what's your um deploy time would you say you you find a place to to, to stay for the day mm -hmm. you park um if you're opening up the flip pack how many minutes does it take you to, to well, so if we set up if we do full setup shares out whole nine yards uh -huh. um we're probably ready to camp in less than five minutes yeah easily that's a good that's a good goal five minutes <laughs> i mean that's a that's a great that's a great goal because you guys are doing it every single day yeah, and yeah I, it has so. to be i mean it, it sure if we had just a a wedge it'd be faster but you yep. know i would rather have the space and take a little more time yep if we're dealing with a rain fly you add another minute to that time right um but we both kind of have our our jobs when we get to camp you know level the truck once yep. that's set up then i flip it open Get the legs set, list calls in the back, start opening, moving all the cushions and stuff. Because we everything goes from travel mode to live mode. we got to strap everything down so it's not all over the right. place when you get to the end of the trail. Um, we just recently started cheating and added a heater, which is fantastic. Right on. Uh, and it's just, uh, just a radiant heater, and it kind of sips the gas. And, and it doesn't make it hot in there, but it cuts the chill off. So yeah. it's, instead of having your beanie down over your ears and your blanket up to your front of your face yeah you can actually have your head out cuts cuts it just edge. cuts it right <laughs> off yeah it's right not on. it's not gonna make it tar I warm was, and toasty but yeah. it, it helps i was just gonna ask you about the the warmth um uh cover a couple things for me warmth when it's when it's really cold we can feel it it's yeah. starting to get cold um you can hear it in my voice <laughs> starting to get a little bit cold now up here in the sierras and then condensation cover those two topics condensation is always an issue um uh -huh. if it's a night where you see a lot of your breath we're yeah. gonna have a lot more um cracking having to vent the windows up top giving them a good crack on there is gonna help quite a bit uh -huh. um the heater because it's propane also add condensation so you gotta keep that in mind too but if if we keep the windows cracked pretty well it's very minimal we do keep a towel up there in the morning if we need to we can just Wipe it before it starts dripping in your face. Yeah, got it. <laughs> but it, it, there is condensation. It is an issue. Um, when the rain flies on, it's warmer. So if it's a really cold, if it's going to be really, really cold, we'll toss the rain fly on as well. It seems to add a secondary layer yep. and keeps it warmer inside. So it keeps the heat in a little bit. But it is a lot, of, other than other setups, it is a lot of tent material. So you do have a lot more space that can get cold. Right, right. One of my probably most important now favorite pieces of kit is the lifesaver water filter system mm -hmm. um we were always running around this year we had two five gallon bigger jerry cans of water and we're always we're you know we're halfway down on on one of them or we're all got a gallon or two left where can we get water we have to buy it we don't want to buy gallons and waste all the plastic yep um 
you know, you're pulling into a campground hoping they have a water spigot that they'll let you use or give them a couple bucks to use or whatever it is. Yep. But again, the water there can be super chlorinated and, and honestly not taste well, very well. Yeah. Um, the Lifesaver filtration system, we can go out to this lake right here and fill it. I mean, it's, right. you can fill it from any water source. They claim swamp muck right. uh, with parasites in it, and it should filter out there. It's a worldwide company for filtering water in really bad parts of the world. Right. On. So for us, it works perfect. We can stop at a stream, a lake, a creek, a whatever, and we'll fill this one and then use it to fill our interior one. So we'll fill this guy up, pump it. It's a pressurized system. And it comes out the bottom um, so we can fill our interior water and mm -hmm. then fill this back up again and 10 gallons we're back on the road great and what's the name of that again what's the company life saver is, is who makes okay, it okay yeah. yeah outer limit supply i think sells yeah. them here in the u.s they okay. do all the medical kits too so great we're gonna take you guys inside so you can see our overland life party central <laughs> I've moved in. I'm never leaving. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a lot of space. This is awesome. This is really cool in here. It's a ton of space for, and I'm, for I'm the no, Yeah, and I'm noticing the view too. Like looking out there over the lake, you guys had an awesome view up here. Um, hey, that looks like an awesome uh, uh, kitchen counter it's it, top. It is. Tell, what is that? That's not it, like it's uh it is a door from yeah. the side of my in-laws house when I was building the setup there. Um, we bought this really nice countertop from Ikea. Yeah. And we thought it was gonna be great. Felt like a nice solid piece of wood. I got the saw out, started cutting, and realized it was full of cardboard inside. <laughs> so not the best place to put a uh, fire burning stove. <laughs> right. <laughs> in cardboard. So uh, I was like, oh, I gotta go to the store and buy some wood. And my father-in-law's down there. He's like, I got a door you can have. Right Went on. around the side of the house and started chopping the door up um perfect and the burner unit it says flame king on it it, it says flame king on it um i personally after three months of use initially i would not recommend it to anybody okay um, it's not a very constant flame we are going to replace it with a different unit we're looking at okay. maybe one of the dometics okay um the knobs came apart literally almost immediately this one's melted already um yep. so you literally it's it's a pain got but, it um it was cheap. It was 100 bucks when we were doing the build out. We wanted to keep it in budget. Yep. So um, that's what we went with. So nice deep sink there. Nice deep sink. The problem with these sinks and these campers is uh, nobody really makes small enough sinks. And if they do, they're like three or four hundred dollars. They're crazy expensive. Right. So that is a stainless steel food grade salad bowl from Walmart for eleven dollars with a drain in the bottom of it. That's awesome. So and then we went with again keeping with the uh, low tech theme. Went with a, a manual boat style pump. Mm -hmm. um, which, if we ever did add a water pump, it also has an input where you can have it be. How many gallons of, uh, of water do you have? We carry 10 gallons of fresh. Okay. And then our gray water is just a one gallon, like milk jug style jug. Uh -huh. And so we'll take that, Got it. dump yeah. it as needed. Got so, mm -hmm. very cool. Um, what about the the drawer the the drawer hardware um, and and stuff like that? So the cabinetry hardware, I really wanted to go with. Uh, something that'd be flush and not stick out on the ends yeah just so when we are moving around in the space uh it'll work better but the way the aluminum is set up i would have had to have built an elaborate hinge mounting system on the inside mm -hmm. so I just went with a standard cabinetry hardware from the hardware store um these we just actually added recently we used to run bungee cords across them to keep them shut mm -hmm. i had little clips on the inside and they just weren't holding it so now we have these cabinetry locks that keep everything shut down tight great and they keep everything from coming out. I see you have a sliding, uh, is this a sliding window here? Yes. The, so, is there a pass through or? There is, so the truck has a sliding window and yep. then this and then this is actually facing that way for the latch so we can yeah. get it from one side. Okay, and great. So you can slide through and I actually was at a friend's house in Portland a few weeks ago, we had to go get a piece of lumber. So we ran one piece of lumber all the way up to the front and <laughs> right it's, on, it's still nice. a truck. Yeah, so. that's, that's nice. Cool. Right on. Nice lighting. Hey, how long does it take to collapse the flip path? Um, with tucking in the sides, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Wow. Yeah, it gets very fast. Man, this is awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a nice home. We love it. Part, party central. Party central. Yeah, cool. You got to have lighting. Yeah, the lights are <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, that was a fantastic, fantastic tour. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, any any uh, 
last minute stories or anything about the rig that maybe we didn't talk about? Uh, any characteristics of it? Um, um, it's, anything. Uh, it, she's big. I mean, I think that's yeah. that's the biggest question. Uh -huh. I, one of the big questions I get is, is it's so big on the trail, it, you know, how do you get it through stuff? And I mean, you saw last night we came in yep. if all the anchors are in, no problem. Yeah. Except for that one spot, we had to stack a couple of rocks. But, yeah. you know, you just take your time and work through stuff. And as big as she is, she's very, very capable. Um, and it's, I love the size of the cab. This the space in there yep. for the two of us, plus three dogs, which is ridiculous to travel with three dogs. We know. <laughs> but it is the perfect amount of space for all of us to be comfortable. And I, I wouldn't, I can't really imagine another rig. That right I on. Want. Right on. Yeah, I mean, this is a great, uh, it's it's really built for a long-term travel. Correct. You've got the space in the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a little smaller, and so we have a lot of deploy and pack right. that you don't have to deal with because you've got the drawer systems and the cabinets and the interior space. The, mo the more stuff that you can have for, the, for a long-term trip, the more stuff that can just have a home. It yep. doesn't have to be moved. It just, you use it and it goes back. Yep. That's the key. Great. Hey, tell folks where uh, where they can where they can find you and where they can follow along. Yeah, our we Overland we life. we are uh, our Overland Life. We are on um, the main point, place we're at is Instagram. Uh, yep. That's where we've kind of had our big focus. We do have a Facebook page. I'm trying to get more content up uh -huh. on there. Uh, and then same name YouTube as well. Uh, we haven't even started on that yet, but that that's coming. So yeah, right. Hopefully on. this winter we're going to settle down just a little bit, stay a little more planted for longer periods of time. Maybe we'll start getting some yeah. videos out. And then Brett or or Liz will answer your questions in the YouTube comments uh, below. So go ahead and ask questions yep. or reach out to them on, you, on Instagram if you guys have further questions. Yeah. DM me directly on Instagram. Happy to answer any specific questions about any part of the building. Right hey, thanks a lot. Really Thank appreciate you, it. Yeah. You bet. Yeah, right